Good morning, everyone. I'm going to give this a few minutes. We're a few minutes before 10. So I want to give this a few minutes. We have um, about 30 some um, participants so far. So we'll give it a couple minutes before we start. Um, hope everybody's well. So as we wait, I, I will, for those of you that are on, I will, um, I'll, I'll truth tell you that I'm a little bit nervous. Um, when they asked me to do this, I thought, oh, you gotta be kidding. Um, thanks, Marilyn. Um, so I'm a little nervous, but hopefully you guys will come away with um, some good information on this about your listening presentation. And um, hopefully it helps. So <laughs> thanks, Jamie. Um, so hopefully this will help you today and it, it should take about an hour. So um, if you can just plan on that and hopefully you'll like it. Um, we're up to about 69 participants right now and it's 9.58. So we'll give it a couple mi more minutes before we get started. I am in my office, the door is closed and I have my mask. So trying to practice being safe. Hopefully all of you are as well. Just reading some of the welcomes on the chat. How's the weather in Cleveland today? It's actually predicting some storms today, but they say sunshine should be coming out later today. So that's good news. Yikes, we're getting up there. We've got almost 90 participants. Oh, I'm even getting more nervous. Oh, so you've got the same weather in Rochester. Yep. Should be hot today, though. They're saying uh, mid 80s. So, can account for some stormy weather. All right, one more minute and we'll get started. We're up to about 100 participants. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I know you're on my side. I appreciate that, Diane. All right. So I hope everybody had a good May. Um, here in the Cleveland market, May was very, very strong. We uh, we had we beat i actually in the pepper pike office i'll introduce myself since it is 10 o'clock i'll go ahead and introduce myself so hi everybody i'm michelle degullis and i am the manager of the pepper pike office in the cleveland area and also the gates mills office um pepper pike office has about 120 agents in it and the gates mills office is a little boutique office and just down the road from us so um as i said our may was amazing um, we actually beat last year's May, which by by quite a bit. So that was pretty um, pretty exciting, and we pretty much brought in the same amount of listings as we did last year. But still, listings are the name of the game, and that's uh, kind of what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with everybody, and let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to start from the beginning. And hopefully everybody can see that screen. So um, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. I renamed this. This was a, a PowerPoint that I've had for a while and I had to do some updating on it. But basically I renamed it to be the ultimate listing presentation as opposed just to the listing presentation because I think from the time that this um, PowerPoint was actually um, created, we have added so many more um, incredible marketing tools to our arsenal that I had, to, I wanted to do some updating to it. So we renamed this the ultimate listing presentation. Um, but let's talk about the listing presentation. What is it that we want to do? And what is our purpose during a listing presentation? Now, our purpose on a listing presentation is really to find out the why for the seller and to explain who we are and what we best can do to tell the story and communicate um, to them what our market differ differentiators are. So we want to find out the why for the seller. What is their why? So I'm going to ask many of you, and you know, as I, I work with a lot of agents, I over the years 
Um, I've been managing for 12 years now, by the way, and um, over these years, I've worked with a lot of agents and through those, as I speak to them, I find out that some of them have extremely polished listing presentations and, um, and they created it maybe 10 years ago and they haven't updated it since because it's what they've been using all along. Or, and it's a PowerPoint or something like that that they print out. Or perhaps there's many of you out there that say, I don't do listing presentations. I just go with my business card and I walk in and I know what I'm doing and I, I basically just wing it. And then there's the rest of us that maybe really do have those listing presentations that you are keeping up to date and so forth. So my question to you today is, since listings are the name of the game in our business right now, um, many of our listing presentations, as I said, are stale and need to be refreshed. So in today's market, listings are most definite important factors as we struggle with low listing inventory, which is what we all are experiencing right now and the high buyer demand is out there. So now more than ever, he who lists will succeed. And I think this has basically been a theme that we've talked about at some of the town hall meetings and so forth. The listing is really the king right now. So question two, has your presentation been updated to include the latest Howard Hanna market differentiators? Does your presentation address how you can reach the largest audience of buyers in the marketplace? Are you talking about find it first, real scout, buy, buy side, open to close, hot list? And it goes on. Are you talking about Howard Hanna mortgage and the one-stop shopping and the pre-approvals? Are you using Hanna presentations? Because if you haven't um, gone into Hanna presentations recently, there's been some updating done to it and there's some phenomenal um, slides in there. And I'm gonna actually demonstrate for that for you in a little bit. Do you have a marketing plan? And do you plan, um, explain to your sellers how you plan to launch the listing? Are you including it and in find it first and how, how you can make find it first work for you that's still sharing it with the rest of the market? Does your dialogue convey our value proposition and hold your commission? Because that's really important. And do you effectively package our three exclusive programs designed to remove obstacles from a buyer's path? Our money back guarantee, our buy before your sell, and the apartment, apartment dwellers program. So let's, here's what we're going to discuss today. We're going to discuss the five elements of a listing presentation. We're going to talk about the seller interview. And for those of you that maybe recently have gone through a fast start, you know that I, um, for those in the Midwest area, I teach the seller interview in fast start. So for some of you, this might be a little bit repetitive for a bit in this presentation because I'm going to go over some of the slides that we talk about during the seller interview. So really what the seller interview is doing for us is it's really getting us to find out the why. We're gonna talk about value proposition, your value proposition, the company's value proposition, and so on. And we're gonna also talk about market knowledge and position. So one of the things that, why I think it's important that we have very strong listing presentations is because people don't necessarily buy what they can't see. So you need to show the service, let them see the service that you're providing to them. We must take the service and make it tangible for the buyers and sellers in our presentation. If we don't know it, and that's where I'm gonna talk a little bit about an elevator speech, we can't sell it. So if we don't understand the money back guarantee program, we're not gonna be able to sell that to people um, and, and sell our market differentiator to them. So we have to know the product. And finally, it's our fiduciary responsibility to give our sellers what it takes to accomplish our goal. Not a technique, but our obligation. So I, I will tell you, there's animations in this, um, this slideshow that I didn't put in, so they, they kind of take me by surprise sometimes. <laughs> so bear with the animation. So every listing presentation must have a seller interview, a property tour, a marketing presentation, a pricing presentation, and finally a closing. So let's talk about the first three of these, the seller interview, the property tour, and the marketing presentation. Those first three could probably be done in any order, although I would probably say the seller interview needs to be number one. So I don't really necessarily agree with that statement on this slide. I think the seller interview should be number one. Depending how you meet with the person when you go to the home, whether you're taking the property for it first or doing the marketing presentation, that can be kind of done in a, um, that can be mixed up if you want to. Or maybe it's you know, doing marketing and property at the same time. But the pricing presentation, it has to wait until right before closing. And why do we say that? Because if it goes too early, it's all they'll think about. If you, if you immediately walk in to the home and you talk about price, or even if you talk about price during the seller interview, 
um, that is, um, that's going to be all that they think about. And so what you might say to the seller when they're saying, well, what, what do you think should um, list for? Say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, let me get through this, um, this marketing presentation to you. Let's get through those steps. Let me do the property tour. And afterwards, we'll talk about the pricing because too many sellers will choose the weakest agent who gives them the highest list price. And I don't want you to make that mistake. So why don't I tell you about um, our marketing and what we're gonna do for you. And then we'll talk about the price of your home. So let's talk about the seller interview. What is it? It's, it is a precursor to presenting company programs and marketing materials. It provides us the opportunity to address the benefits of uh, representation. And it gives us insights into the seller's motivations, their needs and their urgency. So basically it's the more you know. You know, this is where we're really gonna get to know the seller and what they feel about their property and what their past experiences are. I hope I'm not going too fast. Um, if anybody, I'm, I'm going to check my chat window here. Actually, I see if anybody's got any questions. I don't see. I, nope, looking good. All right, so what are our objectives during the seller interview? The objectives during the seller interview is to develop confidence and comfort at asking questions of the seller designed to A, build rapport. B, learn about the property, determine motivation and urgency, learn about their past experiences and uncover their expectations um, that they have. And I have somebody in the chat said, oh, what's Fast Start? Okay. So um, for those of you in different regions, I didn't realize that Fast Start wasn't in all the different regions. Fast Start is the training that we have for the um, the newer agents when they're joining the company. They go through a series of training classes called Fast Start. That's what that is. All right, um, let's move on. Nice. Okay, so where can the seller interview be conducted? You can do it over the phone. You could in, in times of um, different times when we weren't necessarily going through social distancing, maybe over coffee, lunch, dinner, or cocktails. It could be at an open house. Um, you know, perhaps you are at an open house and a seller comes in um, from a neighbor and you start talking to them and you realize they have a house to sell. So you could perhaps launch into the seller interview right there at an open house. It, this says via email. I'm not sure I think a seller interview could be done um, effectively via email. I really think you need to be hearing their voices, maybe um, talking to them. Um, again, it could be on opportunity time. Perhaps you are on opportunity time in a seller calls in and says they need to list their home and you could conduct the seller interview right there. But really, um, I think probably most of the time it is done over the phone. So it's, or it can be done in multiple phases. So what is the seller interview and how, how does it help us? So this sheet that you see in front of you is actually the seller interview questions. I hope that most of you have something that's similar to this that allows you to ask questions and gives you that roadmap to the questions that you need to ask when you're doing this pre-seller interview before you go to the property. What this is gonna tell us, it's gonna let us know what the client's needs and motivations are. Are We can't necessarily apply our knowledge and our skill uh, if we don't know what those needs and motivations are. Um, just as a buyer determines the value of a home, it's the client who perceives your value. So we need to learn their needs. We need to deliver to them and customize to them a presentation and position our services to them um, and we want to earn raving fans through this process. Another question. Will I send that sheet? I will. All right, next. Sorry. I kind of freeze up. All right, so let's first talk about the building rapport. I'm sure this is a, a, an acronym that many of you are very familiar with, and this is how we definitely build rapport. Okay, I've got a raised hand, everybody. I don't know how to do that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'll get to the raised hand. I'm not sure how to how to get to you. Hold on, let me go to more. No, can't see it. All right, so um, so building rapport. We we talk about Ford, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Um, what that's basically when we start talking to somebody on the phone before we launch into the questions We're going to really get to that rapport building with them. You know you when you talk to somebody you say hey, 
hey, I saw that your um, daughter got married. That's fantastic. Tell me about the wedding. How was it? Maybe you ask them about the new job that they just took. Maybe you want to say, I understand that you're planning a trip next year to um, Italy. I, I, tell me all about that. That sounds fantastic. Or maybe you just came back from a trip. Obviously, we're going through some different times now. So this, these questions might change a little bit. And then, of course, maybe we ask them about their dreams. So this is our rapport building part. Before you launch into the questions, you want to build that rapport with them. And during that time, you want to ask them about their expectations of the conversation you're going to have. What do they want to learn today as we go through the questions? So first of all, during, and then, so after we build rapport, we want to start finding out about the property. So we're going to ask them to describe their house. We want to pay attention to them as they're describing their house. What adjectives are they using? This is going to give you a lot of insight into the seller and how they feel about their house. And it's also going to give you the opportunity to jot down some of these key words that they're using. And when you list this property, it's going to give you a little bit of a roadmap to when you do the description of the property, because you might be able to use it in the seller's own words, things that they say about their, their property. Find out how long, long they've owned this home. You know, it could be very different if it's somebody that's transfers a lot and they've only been the home a, a year or so compared to somebody that maybe raised their hand, um, family in it and they've been there 40 years. So that's going to give you a lot of insight into the seller um, and the property. It'll also maybe give you a little bit of insight of what the condition of the property might be in when you go there. What attracted you when you bought it? That's a great question for the um, seller is what attracted you when you bought this home, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, and let them describe to you what it was about it. Was it the yard? Was it the amazing um, fireplace? Was it the open concept? Find out um, from them what they think is the most attractive thing about their property. Ask them what they might, um, like the least about their property and what do they like the most about the property, their property. Again, this is going to give you a lot of insight and, and help you describe this property when you go to um, market it for them. Find out about their major improvements. That's really important. And find out when and how much. This is going to give you the opportunity to actually be able to have the conversation with them when they tell you, oh, yeah, we improved the kitchen. We put in a brand new kitchen. And we did that back in August of 1985. So that major improvement might be still weighing in their um, mind as being a great major improvement. However, we know that that value has um, decreased over the years. So you can go in knowing that you're going to have that conversation with them. And then one of my favorite things to do is actually to ask them to look at their home through buyer's eyes. And so based, when you say that to them, say, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, I want you to look at your home through buyer's eyes. If you were a buyer looking at your house today, how would you rate your, on a scale from one to 10, how would you rate your home? And you know, if they say 10, you know you might be um, dealing with somebody that maybe um, is a little unrealistic about their home. Uh, if they give you a more, realistic number, maybe they say five or six or seven, ask them how they came to that determination. What makes them think that the buyer would put it at a five or six or a seven? So get them to um, engage with you during this um, seller interview and answer these questions for you. I also like to ask the question, I don't, didn't have it on the slide, of do they have any idea of how much their home is worth? We're not going to go into the pricing of what we think it's worth, but find out from them what they think it's worth and, and how they came to that determination. All right, so now we're gonna move on to what motivates the sellers to sell. So we know it could be change in family size, change in job, retirement, marriage, or divorce. Maybe they found a new home already. They want a new style of home. Perhaps um, they wanna to move to a different area, you know, a different climate, they're ready for change, anything. Neighbors, noise, traffic, want a different school district. Anything else you can think of that's what motivates a seller to sell. So as we go into that and talk about the, what motivates them to sell, we also wanna talk about what's their urgency to sell. So I'm gonna get all these animations. Oh, I'm gonna go back, hold on. Okay, so find out their urgency. Ask them, what is the timeline you need to be settled in your new home? Uh, is it, do they need to have the kids settled before they start the school year? And here we are at the beginning of June. So we know that, that that's a pretty big urgency to get them on their um, way to the new school system. Maybe they already found a new home. So they're, carrying, they're afraid of carrying two mortgages or they're in the buy before you sell program. So you need to find out if they've done that. A good question is ask them, are you working with a realtor to find your new home um, if they have, are doing that? Maybe they're going outside the area and they need to find a home in you know, Virginia. 
talk about how we can actually help them find that realtor there if they say no they're not working with them or maybe they're staying in the area and this is your opportunity now to hopefully get two sales out of this you're going to get the listing and you're going to get the buy so definitely find that out from them ask them what if this house doesn't sell how are they going to be faced with that fact if they say if they the house doesn't sell in the time frame that they wanted to sell um, so find out from them if they have that in their mind what is their plan um, what what if it sells faster or slower than planned again a great question especially right now we're putting houses on the market right now where they're selling the first day they hit the market they're they're basically going into um, multiple offers on day one so are they prepared for that? Are they prepared to know that their house could sell that quickly? So that's, that helps us establish their urgency. Now during the seller interview, we wanna talk about what their previous experience is. And this is gonna give you a lot of insight of what their expectations are of you. Um, if they had a, a bad experience, um, they may have some resentment towards you and maybe you need to overcome some of those objections with them. So find out how many homes they've owned you know, if they've only been in one home for the past 40 years, their experience is going to be very low. And you're going to need to know that experience so that you can make sure that they're understanding everything you do. You cannot assume that they know exactly what's happening. So find out their experience. Have they worked with an agent before? What was that experience like? How long have they lived in this home? And then ask them to describe what their previous experiences were like. So again, this gives you a lot of insight of how you know you need to tailor your, your personality to them and make sure you're explaining the process um, appropriately to them. So that's, as I said, gets you set up for what their expectations are, what are the most important factors they're gonna have in choosing a realtor, and what is their ideal situation? What do, what do they expect to happen? What's that ideal um, situation? And how did you hear about the company? And how did you hear about me? So these are the times that you're talking about those expectations. This is when you wanna talk to them about how they want to be communicated with. Do they like text? Do they want you to call once a week? So these are the times that you really have to find out what those expectations are from them during that seller interview. All right, so we've gotten through the seller interview. We've prepared ourselves, gotten our um, listing presentation together and our marketing presentation. We've made an appointment to go over to the seller's home and it's time to do that property tour. As I mentioned, you may do the marketing presentation beforehand, but um, this is the proper, I usually do the property tour first. Oh, can I slow down a bit? Yes, I can. I'm not quite as bad as Kate, but I do talk fast. Um, Kate, if you're listening, I don't mean to say something bad about you. Um, so uh, the property tour. So what do we do during that property tour? What I like to do during the property tour is I usually have a clipboard with me or a legal pad, and I wanna take notes while I'm going through that property tour or maybe I even have the MLS input sheet um, on my clipboard and I'm kind of doing that presumed close and going through the house and making notes um, as I'm walking through the house. Yes, I'll get the slides from this presentation for sure. So um, as we go through this, um, you're making those notes and this is, this is almost a continuation of the seller interview. We're conti continuing to build that rapport, that forward kind of conversation that we're having. Um, you're going through the property. The homeowners are giving you um, insight into their property. They're talking about the features of the property. They're talking about improvements that they made. You're making notes. You're paying attention to what they're saying. And you're, while you're doing this, and while you're doing this property tour, again, we're learning what's their motivation. What are their hot buttons? What are their preferences? And the whole time we're going through this property, we're also thinking about how we can best market this. What are the opportunities that we can do? What can Howard Hanna do? And what programs can we introduce to get this property marketed? So, you know, the whole time we're doing it and we're walking through, we are learning and continuing. And still, even before we sit down to do that marketing presentation, we're maybe changing it in our head a little bit because we're learning as we go through this property with the with the homeowner. Um, we're thinking about the condition of it. We're thinking about the appearance and any recommendations that we might give. Now, I would warn you, don't necessarily share your recommendations during the initial property tour before you have this, um, them you know, signed and told, telling you that you're hired. You don't wanna give away too much of your information because too often I hear the frustration from the realtors out there that they, you know, they suggested staging. They did all this stuff long before they had 
the seller um, committed to um, listing with them and a seller turns around and lists with somebody else and takes all your ideas. So as you're, you're making notes on your legal pad about things that can be done, don't necessarily share it all. Maybe you give little tidbits, but don't share it all. All right, so let's get a little bit into the, now the marketing presentation. Um, this is actually where, sorry, I'm gonna, I have a chat, I think. Oops. My chat disappeared on me. This is, um, this is where you really wanna start talking about Howard Hanna um, and what we, who we are. You know, this, and this, I'm gonna demonstrate a Hanna presentation that I did very quickly yesterday so that you can kind of see all this stuff we're gonna talk about in the marketing presentation is so easily available to you in HANA presentations. And whether you wanna do it as a digital presentation or you wanna print it out as a PDF, that's all available to you. So as we go through this, you wanna be able to tell the Howard HANA story. You wanna say who we are, um, have that elevator speech with you. So, you know, do you say something like this? While it seems you see Howard Hanna signs everywhere you go, we are actually a regionally focused family owned real estate company. That started, um, this company started as a one office operation in the city of Pittsburgh. You talk about the family here. Through our growth and innovation and exceeding client expectations, Howard Hanna has evolved into a recognizable brand spanning a 10 state footprint throughout the Midwest and mid Atlantic states. Our team of over 11,000 agents and staff members work in concert to help our clients navigate the complexities of their real estate transaction. And by the way, I will, what I'm reading from, I will also send this with you along with that seller interview questionnaire and these slides, just an FYI, because there's some really good dialogue on here that you might wanna kind of get part of your elevator speech, as I said. So this is, um, as you're using the hand of presentations, you're gonna be able to um, talk as you get through each of those slides. And what we really wanna do during this marketing presentation is we really wanna show to everybody what makes us unique from other companies. Okay, I'm gonna back up because I'm now just seeing this. Um, Marianne, you asked the question, how do you not offend them with that? Um, what were you referring to in that question? Can you type that in? All right, Marianne, I might have to reach out to you later to um, figure out what that question was about. So just uh, let me know. All right, um, so moving on, how do we differentiate ourselves from the competition? So if we talk about all the different tools that we have available to us, and I almost hate to use the word tools, to be honest with you, because these are just really amazing marketing um, pieces that we have available to us. And again, market differentiators. So here's just a sampling of what we have when we answer that question and what we can customize and utilize according to the individual needs. So we've heard a lot about buy side. Last Wednesday, the webinar was about buy side. Our Friday town hall was with the, um, the CEO of buy side. It was fantastic. I thought it was a great webinar. Of course, we have our open to close, Real Scout, Engage, CRM, web activity and property view reports, you know, postcards plus, e-cards and e-blast, our media and social media and all that we do. So these are all the things that differentiate us and we need to be able to talk about those. For example, how would you explain buy side? You know, I love, I've got another great um, dialogue here that I'll share with you. Oh, the, um, okay, so uh, Marianne, you said, Marilyn has to jump off. Mar um, Lois, how, generally speaking, how long should this take? I generally tell a seller to tr try to expect it to be an hour. It could go a little bit longer. Find out from the seller how much time they have. They might not have the time um, that you're gonna need to take. So as you're going through your marketing presentation, maybe you're leaving, you're kind of skipping and going through the high points of it and you're leaving behind their, they're leaving behind with everything that's in there. And perhaps then you follow up afterwards to talk a little bit more about it. But that's generally what I would say to plan for an hour we could go over a little bit more. And Marianne, you're, you, okay, when they ask about suggestions before signing the listing paper, et cetera, how do you say you don't want to help them without offending them? I would say in that question, Marianne, I would say that, um, I, I would say, you know, I'm making notes and I'm thinking about your home, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, and I'm looking forward to sitting down and talking to you a little bit more when we go through 
my marketing presentation. Once we've gotten through all of this, um, I will probably come back with a, um, and we'll meet again, and I, we can walk through and talk about some of the things that we want to um, get your home ready to sell. And at that point, you're leaving behind, and I'll show this to you when we go to um, Hannah Presentations, there's a great seller, how a seller should prepare their home in our Hannah Presentations that you could print off for them and maybe give that to them um, when you leave. Hopefully that answered your question, Marianne. So moving on, okay, a lot of, okay. So this is where I'm gonna take us, I'm gonna stop the share for a minute so I can go back to the share. And I'm gonna take us to my Google Chrome and get the Hannah presentations. So I'm gonna go into, what I pre-made one just for the sake of timing. And I'm gonna demonstrate this um, for all of you. As most of you know, you come in here and if you work in Hannah presentations, you put your subject property in here. Whether you, um, have, there's a recent MLS number that you could use or you have to fill in all the different blanks here. Um, this is where we start the property. And of course you upload a picture. And then you go and you search for your comps. And I'm gonna jump over to the, actually the pages. This is the presentation. And let's go ahead and view that presentation as a web. And this is gonna sh um, show to you all the things we just talked about. And, and actually showing the um, seller who Howard Hanna is, our why, and so forth. So let's go down to, here's who Howard Hanna is. So as you're highlighting this. You don't want to read this whole thing to them, but you want to highlight it. And we've talked a little bit about the dialogue for that. Um, here again, here's their story. You, you know, sometimes I think these two, two together could perhaps be a little bit um, redundant. So maybe you want to take one of those slides out. We talk about our marketing experts. And um, so this again is showing our why and how we differentiate ourselves from the competition. Um, we talk about Hannah Home Finder, the hot list, open house app. There's even more that we could talk about. Again, we're gonna talk about, you know, open to close, buy side, and I would even suggest that maybe we add slides like that in here. We, of course, talk about the relocation and business development. And now this is where we're gonna get into the comps and the property information. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go out of this. And as you pick your different um, slides, you know, maybe I decided I don't want this build on a tradition, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. And also keep in mind, you can move slides up. And I wanna come down, I wanna show you what is most recent, the Hannah presentations, is buy side. So this is actually looking up where this hop property is located. So just from my putting in the property address, it has automatically created a buy side BMA for this presentation without me even having to do anything and it's pulled that up. You know, that's a good question and I will definitely bring that up, Nancy. So Nancy asks, will they update pages um, uh, for the new way we are doing business, virtual tools, virtual open houses, keeping up with times, protecting them in our communities? I think that's an excellent, excellent um, question, Nancy, and I will definitely make a note to bring that up to somebody in marketing. And, um, the question that um, Susan, you had, which presentations are you pulling from? This is from Hannah Presentations. Uh, I'll demonstrate if you go to Go Hannah uh, and you scroll down to Hannah Presentations right here. And then that's, that's where this, and then go into Hannah Presentations. Okay, oh, okay, let me demonstrate. I'm gonna back up for a second. Let me demonstrate, because I have a feeling you, some of you have some questions, how I even created that with the new slide in it. So let me just demonstrate. Let's say we are gonna create new. When you go to create new, and of course you're picking the seller, and you continue, it comes up with the templates. And this is our default template, and as you can see, the radio button is already defaulted to that default template. However, if you come down to the new default seller, this is where you can find the, um, the buyer page, the buy side pages have been updated in there. So that's the new default seller. And that's what I use to create the presentation I was just showing to you. 
And again, remember um, when I told you that you might want to leave behind something, here's a new essential guide to selling as well that you might want to go ahead and create um, and show. And if you want to look and see what is in this before you actually create it, you can see that it'll actually show you the pages that are in this presentation. And that template. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And I'm gonna X out of this. I'm gonna go to this. So again, this is the um, buy side that's automatically been done for you. Um, it's, it'll go to the online buyer activity, just like our buy side. It goes down to finding our buyers. So here's a great little thing that shows finding your buyer. Again, talking about buy side, and this is where you might want to have that elevator speech I'm going to give to you about buy side. And I'll say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I know where the buyers are and how to reach them. Through Howard Hanna's exclusive buyer analytics software, buy side, I am able to analyze the buyer demand and connect with active buyers looking for homes in your neighborhood and price point and immediately notify them of your home's availability. Further, I am able to alert the colleagues in my office and surrounding offices of your home's availability and match your home with their buyers who are looking for homes with your amenities. And then also my own personal sphere of um, past clients and my social media network provide a great audience to showcase your home, which allows me to cast a wide net across the region in the marketplace to identify buyers. In addition to those great resources, my Howard Hanna Loan Officer provides me with a list of pre-approved buyers looking for homes in your area and price range, allowing me to connect with ready, willing, and able buyers to arrange instant showings on your home. So again, explaining why this is so important to them. This is your hook, guys. This, this new thing that we have, this is your biggest hook that you have right now to beating your competition. So please, if you're not using Vice or not talking about in your um, marketing presentations, please start doing it. So this is, um, this is a great new tool. I love that they're putting it in, in, into HANA presentations. If you already have a template in HANA presentations and you like what it is and you just wanna add the buy site stuff, what you wanna do is go into add a page, go into add from library, and come into partner pages. And when you go to partner pages, you'll see those are where the three um, buy side slides are that you can add to your, um, your presentation if you already have a template in there. <laughs> How do you help? I love the objections. To, by, by, honestly, um, these are great because when I do when I do this at Fast Start, we do have some questions that are kind of tough. So the question we have here is, how do you help a client that believes just because the location of the home is prime, the house needs work, getting them to be realistic? Well, I think really that comes when we start talking about that pricing um, area, when we get to that part of the presentation and we show them their competition and we talk about that competition with them. Um, one of the biggest reasons why we no, need to know what the inventory is out there is that we can confidently talk about the home and the condition of the home that's sold down the street. So we could say to you, yes, this is a great neighborhood. However, you can see your neighbor down the street sold for this amount of money. Um, and they actually, their house, the you know, and, you know, people are afraid to insult. And I think you can word things that you're not insulting someone when you talk about home improvements. Your kitchen is lovely. However, today's um, buyer is um, looking more for um, you know, white cabinets or granite countertops or whatever it might be that the improvement is, that is different than what their neighbor sold it for at that prime location. All right, I'm going to go back to my, my PowerPoint now. and share that screen. And I wanna just make sure I've got everybody's questions. Okay. So getting to that market presentation. So again, this is a great thing. Um, we're talking a lot about our money back guarantee program right now. And it's really important that you know how to talk about that money back guarantee program and the other value added programs that we have. So at this part of the marketing presentation, again, I will share this dialogue with you. This is where you might say to Mr. To the seller say, you know, as a Howard Hanna agent, I'm skilled at overcoming buyer objections. 
in today's world, obviously with a pandemic going on, we might have some unrest of people, you know, not sure about moving forward and buying a home right now. So we want to come overcome those buyer objections. And that helps buyers move faster in securing their home. So Howard Hanna provides for me three exclusive programs designed to remove obstacles from any buyer's um, path. And it leads to uh, fat, faster sales of our seller's properties. So with our money back guarantee program, if for any reason the buyer of your home is not happy with their purchase, Howard Hanna will buy the, the home back for 100% of the purchase price, which provides the buyer with greater peace of mind and helps them feel better about putting pen to paper faster to write an offer on your home. So that's what the buy, um, that's the great thing about money back guarantee. So to that seller, you make sure they understand this is an exclusive program and that Howard Hanna believes so much in their, their home that they're willing to buy it back if for any reason that buyer um, at any point, at six months after they've lived there, they want to move out. So make sure you know that elevator speech for, for the money back guarantee. The apartment dwellers um, trade in, you know, through that unique program, we have created to help potential buyers currently in a lease situation move forward with purchasing your home prior to the expiration of their lease, which again helps buyers um, move faster in buying homes. Um, the Buy Before You Sell program is also another great um, program that we have. So those are all the benefits that you want to talk about as you're going through your marketing presentation. And again, make sure that you have these slides in your hand of presentation that cover those. And, and as you saw that I did. So let's go on to the next one. You know, I have something, a slide or something that demonstrates all the different things that we have available from our beautiful signs to howardhanna.com explain to them how, uh, what the web traffic is to howardhanna.com. Well, that gives us actually analytics and insight into how many people are looking at their home on howardhanna.com so that we can go through that. Again, the buy side, open to close. Why is open to close you know, something that is beneficial for the seller to explain to the seller that that allows us when we're meeting the open house um, visitors, we were able to follow up with them immediately to see what their interest is. So again, open to close, our Just Listed, Just Sold program and all of our direct marketing. I think that most of you have probably heard, you saw the email, you will be getting information, more information about our upcoming Howard Hanna app. Um, so that is gonna definitely be another talking point that you're gonna have, so that's coming soon. Roman, what is the apartment dwellers trade-in? The apartment dwellers trade-in was created to help um, a, a person who's actually in a lease situation where they're renting and they want to buy and their lease is gonna, not going to be up for um, a while and they want to buy before their lease is up. We actually have created a program that can help us get them out, help them get out of that lease. There is some formula to it. Um, not every person in a lease does this apply to. Um, it depends on how much time is left on the lease. Um, if the, the um, landlord will allow us to sublease, because that's what we're trying to do is perhaps find somebody to come in and sublease from them. So that's what the apartment dwellers trade in, and we can get you more information about that as well. So next, you have to craft your plan. What is your tailored marketing plan for your seller? You need to tell them the plan. I have had um, feedback sometimes over the years where somebody might say to me, we didn't go with your agent because, and the because was they didn't tell me what they were going to do. They didn't tell me their plan on how they were going to market my property. And this was a pretty sophisticated seller and it was a high end property. And I gave that feedback to the agent and she, she was very thankful that we talked about it. We talked about um, creating that plan and how, she, and she does it on every listing um, appointment she goes on now is she makes sure she tells that seller what her plan is um, for marketing their property. So you have to have that plan. Um, as you're putting that plan together, you wanna to make sure you're reiterating the needs that they shared with you, um, what their wants are. So make sure you're addressing the plan um, as what they want. Maybe they told you they want open houses you know, frequently, and maybe they told you they want updates on the marketing um, once a week. So make sure as you're creating this plan, you're putting in those talking points as well of what your um, plan is gonna be. And also, is your plan creating urgency? So I'm gonna share with you um, a three-tier step, step, we already did that. Um, we already talked about these things, but making sure you have all these things in your marketing plan. As you're putting that marketing plan together, you know, say when you're gonna put it in the hot list. 
talk about uh, how you're going to, um, the buy side, talk about the open to close and how you're going to have that at all of your um, open houses and so forth. No, actually, uh, Marie, I actually would give my marketing plan at least a portion of my marketing plan during the marketing presentation because I really want them to see how I differentiate myself from the next person. And my hope is, is if I'm in competition, then the next person isn't giving their marketing plan and I've already gotten a leg up on that particular person. So um, that was the question. At what time do you share your marketing plan after you have a signed listing or prior? I personally prior, everybody has their own way of doing things, but I personally do at least give a portion of it, maybe the 30 day plan and then tell them that I will update it every 30 days. Oh, enhanced property profile. I believe that the enhanced property profile that we're talking about is on realtor.com and how we are on enhanced on realtor.com as, as um, pros and that all the leads come to us. All right, so let's talk about creating that excitement urgency and a roll out for the marketing. So I know everybody has different MLS rules across the regions. So um, in, in this particular region, and I think, and you know, Given what the NAR rule is, you know we're supposed to get the, our listings into the MLS um, in a certain amount of time. Um, so let's talk about though the urgency that we have out there right now. The buyers um, are so in demand. So why don't you roll out this with a great urgency going on it? Perhaps you even capture that buyer yourself as you go through this. Hannah to go. What was Hannah to go? I believe that needs to, that was something on this slide I probably should have eliminated. I think Hannah to go was an older app that we had. Um, so look forward to our new Hannah app. It's going to be great. Uh, I've already gotten a sneak peek at it and you guys will have it soon. So um, I'm looking forward to you guys getting excited about that. So let's talk about that plan of action, the rollout plan. This is not my 30 day plan. I would also probably do a 30 day plan, but this is my plan of rolling out the listing. So you get the property listed on Friday. Here in the Northeast, Northeast Ohio, our MLS requires us to actually put the property in within 24 hours after we, after we do any public marketing. So therefore we have to, if we list it on a Friday, that does not include by the way weekend. So this is why we have this strategy. List the property on Friday, um, get all the paperwork dated for that Friday. Once you've done that, go ahead and put that into our Find It First program on howardhanna.com so that it is going to be put out there on howardhanna.com through Friday evening and the weekend. So we are capturing people hopefully before Monday. Go ahead and get over to the house and record, and tell your um, seller you're gonna record a virtual tour of the property that you're gonna actually put on howardhanna.com so that that tour can be seen of the property. Something that's so important right now and really going back to, um, uh, the person that asked, can we get the slides and hand presentation updated? I think this is on point for that, um, for sure. So make sure that we tell them we're going to get that virtual tour up and running for them on Friday so that it goes through the weekend with the virtual tour. So all that we're going to do on Friday. Also on Friday, we want to send out a virtual open house invite to our neighbors. Those are pieces that are available to you on um, in our HANA e-cards, those open house invites. They're dynamic and you can put them um, out there to your neighbors. So get out to your neighbors a virtual open house invite. Um, actually, you can also do it as a print, print it out as a flyer, as a door hanger, deliver it to their doorsteps, whatever it might be. Um, get those out to the neighbors, the 5510. Tell them we're having a neighbor pre-market sneak peek. Send that e-card that I just talked about through GoHanna to your sphere, to your custom groups, to your closed buyers, to your closed sellers, to your HANA leads, et cetera. Whoever is in your HANA e-context, get that e-card invite out to them. And then on Saturday, um, talk to people about that first look open house you're gonna have on Sunday. Send an e-blast to the neighboring um, Howard Hanna offices on Saturday. Invite them to the um, open house. And when we're talking right now a virtual open house, I realize that in some markets, um, you might be starting to think about going back to in-person open houses. So just because I'm using the word virtual here, doesn't mean that you can't also apply this to having an open house in person that Sunday, hopefully as we come out of this, that'll be happening more and more. So send that e-blast to the neighboring Howard Hanna offices, invite them to have their buyers tune in if it is gonna be a virtual open or invite them to come by and so that they can see the um, virtual open. Um, 
And then also on Saturday, create a social media post, put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, promote your virtual first look open house, include the open to close link to pre-register um, and post um, at the time you will be going live. And don't forget to um, have your friends share your post on social media. Have the sellers share it, give them the link to it so they can share it. Then of course on Sunday morning, remind people on social you will be going live in a few hours or you'll be having it in a few hours. Ask your friends to share the post, have them do a watch party if you're doing it as a virtual open house. Any of those things you wanna do on, on Saturday and Sunday as you roll this out. Of course you go ahead and host the live virtual open house or the open house and then you actually remind your guests to register using open to close. Put that link on your social media so you can follow up with any additional information after the tour. And then of course, after your 15 to 20 minute tour, don't go too long if you're doing this virtual, I think you lose your audience. Um, let the audience know that you'll remain at the property for the next 45 minutes and invite them to FaceTime you for a closer look at the home or to private message you with any specific questions. So that's our rollout for the tiers. And then of course, tier three is when we go ahead and say on Monday, we follow up with everybody, let the neighbors know the current buyer demand, how quickly the homes are going under contract, the multiple hours offers, and then encourage them to reach out if they're thinking of entering the market sometime soon. And um, of course, we um, then put it into the MLS. Um, and we have, at least in this part of, um, of our region, we have adhered to the, the rules that we have to with the MLS, yet we created a sense of urgency for that um, for that seller as we rolled it out. So share that idea with them. Let them know how exciting that first weekend on the market will be and how you're going to create that excitement. Um, and then you will of course go into um, providing them the 30 day marketing plan as we are starting to close in this um, marketing presentation. So next in your marketing presentation, make sure you're talking about your resume, make sure you're showing your market knowledge. This is where you're gonna short share some of um, your trend graphics reports um, and showing them. And this is where we're now starting to get to that pricing part of our marketing presentation. Um, so you wanna show your market knowledge. You're gonna start talking about the CMA and so forth. You also wanna show them, like I said, your resume. You wanna show them perhaps some of your quality service returns that you've gotten, a testimonial tree. Um, you wanna talk about, you know, maybe talk about your managers and the corporate support that you get at this point in the presentation and just really, really come across to them showing how competent you are. Show them the benefits of how competent you are over, uh, over the features and how you um, make sure that you are taking great care of them. Again, market knowledge and positioning. So Christine, what you're in the Sandusky area? Um, maybe, like I said, some MLSs might have a different story um, and in terms of you putting in the MLS. What I would suggest though, I don't know about your MLS, but our MLS, we can actually say we do not want it to be an internet listing, meaning it won't go to the um, third party websites until we say yes to that, which can be changed at any time. So maybe that's something in your market that would work. But um, apparently Christine says that her MLS actually changed as of yesterday that all listings have to go in within the first 24 hours and it doesn't, weekends don't count. See here are MLS weekends, um, weekends don't count. That's why we, it has to go in by Monday and we can, we can market it through the weekend. I hope that answers that question. Um, so again, make sure you're going through the pricing presentation, show them trend graphics, talk about the CMA, talk about motivation, property condition, the location, um, the availability of the inventory, what our current market placement and conditions are. Trend Graphics is great for this. Um, one thing I can tell you, um, Trend Graphics is now starting to do up-to-date um, snapshots of the market. It used to be you had to wait until the end of the month, and now it's showing us actually as of the current day in Trend Graphics. So it, it's a great tool to use when you're um, working with your clients. And finally, when you get to closing, yeah, so Christine, in your case, that it does sound like your MLS has changed it, that you can't do it in the weekends. Diane, I will definitely make a, um, a point that we should do a trend graphics. You know, I don't know how many of you attended Leah's 
Um, Leah Gibbons did a um, data matters um, webinar and she probably will do that again because I think she had a lot of technical difficulties during that. And there was definitely a portion of trend graphics um, in that. So maybe we can get that one to air again. Um, you can probably find it in the Wednesday webinar links of previously recorded Wednesday webinars. So if you want to, I think it recorded okay, it just didn't broadcast okay. So if you want to go find that in, um, in uh, the, the YouTube channel for the Wednesday webinars. Where is trend graphics found? All right, let me show you that. I'll demonstrate that. Let me show you. I will. Go. go to home and go Hannah. Okay, thank you. Um, it's under the marketing drop down menu, and you can see if you scroll down here to the bottom. Now, this is Trend Graphics Ohio, so I don't know what everybody says, and hopefully, you all have it, but that is where you find Trend Graphics. And I've got some raised hands. So, Nancy, I see you raised a hand. Would you, do you want to talk? All right. I'm going to go back to my other chat. Okay, so I see two of you told me that the screen was refreshing and we didn't see and that I lost her sound. Did, did you see it after I um, went back to it? If someone could answer, because I could go back to that. Please yes. go back. I'm sorry, Nancy, what? Please go back. Couldn't see it, couldn't hear it. Okay, I'll Thank go back. You. Thanks, Nancy. Good to hear you. Thanks. All right, I'm going back. Okay. Somebody just tell me if you can see this. So I'm going to go back to Howard Hanna. Okay. Yay. Thank you. You see it. All right, so we're going to go back to the um, marketing drop down menu and scroll down. And you'll see there's trend graphics. And again, like I said, some of you might um, not have it. And I, I hope most of you have it in your markets, but this is where you find trend graphics. And then, of course, you can come in here and pick the um, counties that you want, the communities you want, the zip codes that you want, and create this very dynamic graph to share with your, your clients as you're talking about the pricing um, positioning. You can see, as I talked about, it even gives today's stats. So you can see in our yes, MLS area in Northeast Ohio, look how much we are in our pended sales up. Um, so as we said, it's a strong market right now for sales in the, um, in the Northeast Ohio area. But this is a fantastic graph. It does go to different things, average price per square foot tab, days on market tab, and so forth. And it also gives you how you talk about each report. So if you highlight over this market highlight, it'll show you the average continuous days on market trend remains steady. It actually talks about whether it's a, a buyer's market or a seller's market. And then if you need to understand a little bit about each of the different tabs, if you highlight over quick guide, it'll give you that as well. So really great stuff. Um, I'm gonna go back now and 
share. Actually, I'm going to go back to my hand of presentation. Somebody asked if I could go back to how they could put that, um, that the buy side slides into hand of presentations. So I will show you that. Again, if you go to seller and you want to continue, make sure you pick the new default seller template. And you can see in that the buyer heat map is there. I got more people answer. You don't see it on your home screen. How do we get it added? Is that trend graphics or buy side? Okay. I might have to answer some of the questions afterwards and I'd be happy to do that. I apologize because I think we're going a little um, long here and I want to try to get things wrapped up. Oh, trend graphics. So Nina, I will look, I don't know what um, market you're in. I'll have to figure that out and see if perhaps trend graphics is not in your market. Um, so I'll let you know. And if you want to just um, let me know what market you're in, I'll look into that. Okay. I will look into that um, also, Roman, I'll find out. All right, I'm going to um, move on. I'm going to go ahead and stop the share and let's wrap up the, the um, PowerPoint as our closing. Again, we talk about the document review and completion. That's where you're going to hopefully have them sign the listing agreement. Hopefully you do this in one stop and you get them to sign it. Um, and you don't even have to worry about anybody coming in after you. Um, you want to, this is where they might come up with some commission um, objections and how you might overcome them. And hopefully your outstanding marketing plan will support the fact that you are a full service real estate agent working for a full um, service real estate company and defend your commission because we deserve what um, our commissions are. Um, make sure you're going over your marketing plan. Tell them that you will um, make sure you're giving them 30 day updates. You want to talk about your role as their listing agent and how you're going to manage list listing. This is where you're probably going to talk about the showing instructions and also how you're communicating with the seller in terms of how often and how um, they want to be communicated with. And this is, you also want to talk about the seller's role and what their involvement is. And you might leave that leave behind piece that I showed you that is for the seller to prepare their home. And finally, um, talk, show them the buyer and seller responsibilities sheet and timeline. And you can find that on GoHanna, um, but I could also make sure it goes out as a handout. Um, all right. And that. And remember, um, as you're going through this, you know, one of the key questions that somebody asked before is how long should you tell the seller to, to um, anticipate this presentation is going to take? You know, you could tell them it's going to take an hour, but um, they might tell you they don't have that much time. So remember, you don't have to plow through every point and every screen because you're going to leave some of this behind. But you want to make sure you're providing the solutions to the, that seller interview that we had and um, make sure you're highlighting the points of the presentation that really um, speak to what the seller wants and show them how we have solutions and our services and our um, processes. Um, the, the, okay, this, this presentation will be re, um, recorded and it will be on the Wednesday webinars link. So you know when we get out the, um, the town square newsletter that comes out that Hobie sends, he always puts on there the Wednesday webinar link if you missed a Wednesday webinar. So it's always available. It is a YouTube channel actually that you would be going to. So this will be available there. So somebody's putting me on the spot and wants to know what do I use as a close? <laughs> All right, Beth, that's putting me on the spot, um, how I close. You know, um, I would just reiterate again, all of the, the points that you just went to and talk about the seller. I, I, would, I would go back and even refer back to the seller interview and say to them, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when we first talked over the phone last Wednesday, um, you mentioned to me that this was what was really important to you. You described your home to me and I found it so wonderful compliment them on their home and just reiterate all the things that they brought up in that seller interview you addressed in this marketing presentation. So ask them, um, 
did I, you know, did I address everything that you were looking for? And if so, what will it take for you to um, decide today that I am the right realtor to market your home and get it sold for you at the highest and best value? So, you know, something to that effect, and, and I was thinking off my feet on that one, but um, I'm sure many of you have a, a much greater close than I just did. So anyway, all right, so um, we're at the questions part. Let me see if I can get back to that and find all your questions. So I'm gonna stop my share and go back to some of the questions and see. Um, Renee, you asked back to the buy side page to include in the presentation, would you show, so I did show that again, hopefully I answered that one for you. Um, going down, can you explain the apartment trade-in benefit? So these are some of the older questions. Um, the apartment trade uh, benefit, I think I talked a little bit about, so I might've already answered that one, that it helps a, a, a buyer get out of a lease so that they can be, um, actually go and buy the properties. I have, do you, have a, do you leave a printed copy or digital copy of the presentation? I do, I do believe in that. Okay, what if you don't have lots of listing experience? How can you make a seller comfortable and confident to list with you? Your resume will seem weakened, won't it? How do you overcome that? Okay, so this is something I talk about in the Fast Start classes a lot with everybody. That is, um, I think that's an easy one to overcome. I think for most of us, as we come into this career, we, come from, we have other careers that we've come from. We're, most of us aren't necessarily new to business or new to, new to life experiences, or maybe you're, previous experiences that you just recently sold a home or um, bought a home as a consumer. So talk about those experiences that you have and how that has strengthened you as a realtor and knowing what the needs are for the, um, the seller. Um, talk about the experience that you have behind you. This is a great place where you talk about, you know, the team of people at your office, your manager, um, the corporate office and so forth and how, how you're actually very um, experienced with all that. So, that's a good way to overcome that. All right. So I didn't discuss price until after I got through all of the um, marketing presentation. I talked about, um, we went through, you know, all the different tools that we use to market the home. And then, then I, after that, that's when I would start talking about the pricing and showing the CMA and showing the side-by-side -side comparisons that you have in your, um, your um, slides on your Anna presentations. And um, I have a great question here from Michael. Um, Michael it's asking, do we typically, um, is asking if we typically ask if they will be interviewing other agents. And if anybody wants to chime in on that, they can. Um, I do, um, I kind of like to know what my competition is. And I also like to know um, what number in their, um, in the meetings that I am, am I first, am I last? Um, if I find out that I'm first, and then I will respectfully ask if they would actually invite me back or call me afterwards so that I can kind of um, talk to them a little bit about us again. Um, I, I personally would like to be the last agent in and get them to sign right away. But yes, I do typically ask if they talk to anybody else. All right, so we have gone almost exactly the amount of time that I was allotted. Um, I will be sharing, I can share these presentation slides. I'll have to um, get the list of all of you from Kate and um, have her send everything out, but definitely we can get these presentation slides out to you and um, any of these handouts that was discussed. So just to make sure the handouts were the seller interview, um, the dialogue that I was reading from um, for you to use your elevator speech and also, um, I can't remember what my last one was, but I'll, fit, I'll, I'll think of it. All right, thank you everybody. Um, I hope that you had a nice time and I did and you, thanks for helping me get over my nerves. <laughs> um, I hope all of you are great and see you again soon, thanks.